hoping and counting its reward. يقول الإمام الخطابي, the first one to give explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari, he tells us, احتساب, يعني you're accounting with Allah. يا Allah, on that day, in that day, in that year, I fasted. I expect its reward. يناشد ربه. You come at the end of your day happy because you know there will be a day when you will be happy to meet Allah. The world around you may not fast, but you have fulfilled an obligation towards the creator of the heavens and the earth. I account for this day. Arju hisaba, arju sawaba. I hope for its reward. Iman and wahtisaba. For that person, for that man, for that woman, their iman is elevated. And therefore their reward is elevated. And therefore Allah blesses them with their sins being forgiven. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he says, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمْ His sins of the past are forgiven. What does this mean? It means that Allah gives you in the month of Ramadan enough good deeds to cancel out the sins. يَمْحُ اللَّهُ السَّيِّئَاتِ وَيُثْبِتُ وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ Allah cancels out your evil deeds because in the month of Ramadan you've done enough to cancel it. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Al-Quran that what you do in good deeds, that the things that we do in pleasing Him subhanahu wa ta'ala cancels out the sinful deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala erases by it our sinful deeds. So the month of Ramadan is a month of optimism. Shahrul Mubarak. Tuftahu fihi abwabu sama. The Prophet sallam is telling you the heavens are opened. Meaning your dua la yurad. The dua you and I make normally can be hindered, can be pushed back down. You raise your hands to Allah and the angels push the dua back down to your face. They say, no, this will not rise up to Allah. Because you are not a person who is fit to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore you find moments that a person yad'u wa yad'u wa la yustajab. And their dua is not answered. Why? Because you look into their life, anna yustajab lah. Yaqul al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man in the middle of the desert, his camel with all of its belongings and all of his water has run away from him. And he wakes up in the morning, he knows it's his final day on this earth. There's no food, there's no water, I'm in the middle of the desert. And he puts his hands up to Allah, he's in need. يَدْعُ اللَّهُ وَهُوَ فِي حَاجَةٍ وَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْمُجِيبِ And Allah is the one who normally answers such an individual. And he puts his hands up and he says, يَا رَبْ يَا رَبْ My Lord, my Lord. And this man, مَنْ بَسَهُ مِنْ حَرَامٍ his clothing from haram, earned what he feeds and clothes himself with, with haram. مطعمه من حرام, مشربه من حرام. وغذي بالحرام. His whole system of life is based on corruption. أنا يستجب له. How can he think Allah will hear his dua? Allah bars that dua. And there are moments in this month of Ramadan where our dua rises up. The heavens are opened. The angels are told, move, let the dua rise. And the one who is accustomed to making dua outside Ramadan, makes dua in Ramadan. If you find your tongue heavy, you can't make dua. Not talking in eloquence and you want to be like Sheikh Sudais in Khatm al-Quran. I mean dua from your heart. Oh Allah, cure me. Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, guide me. Oh Allah, give me. The essence of your dua of talab. If you don't know how to make dua of sana, oh Allah, you are the most generous. You are Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Al Malik, Al Quddus. If your tongue is heavy, it's because it was, un- it was forgetful of Allah for 11 months. Don't think you will come this month and it will be made easy. The dua is made easy for those who seek Allah. Come to Allah. And therefore the Prophet invites us, orders us, come alive, come awake, rise up to the occasion of this blessed month of Ramadan. Let your tongue loose. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he would show us the art of al-munajah, 
of seeking his creation. When you hear dua ul istighfar, sayyid ul istighfar, the master of how to ask Allah for forgiveness. Allahumma inni abduk. Allah, I'm a slave. Ibn Abdik, my father is your slave. Ibn Amatik, my mother is your slave. Na siyati biyadik, my forelock, my head is bowed in your hand. I have nothing except you, O Allah. Khfirli, fa innahu la yasiru dhunuba illa an. No one forgives but you. Sayyid al istighfar, dua in the month of Ramadan. The occasions where your dua is accepted, the Prophet ﷺ says, Dua al-sa'imi hatta yuftir. The dua of the one fasting, you and I today, until they break their fast, la yurat, cannot be rejected. Dua al-sa'imi hina yuftir. The dua of the one about and at the time of breaking their fast, la yurat. The dua on the day of Jumu'ah, sa'atan, an hour in this blessed day, most of the ulama say from the time the imam leaves the mimbar until salat al asr the dua is not rejected. Dua al-sajidi bayna yaday. The one who prostrates himself before Allah, the dua is answered. Moments of opportunity for us. Finally, the blessed Qur'an. And many times I find my brothers and sisters engaged with the reading of the Qur'an and the Qur'an is recited to them. And we stand long hours, you and I, in salah. And we wonder, and I wonder, I wonder, and you wonder. That which should move me doesn't. That which should help me doesn't. That which everyone tells me when I read books and I read lectures and listen. The Qur'an is supposed to move you. I don't feel it. What do I do? How do I change? What's wrong with me? Where is my iman? Allah tells us in the Qur'an, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَى جَبَلٍ If this Qur'an was to come to an immovable mountain, a mountain that is solid and thick, رَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا It would shudder and quake and crumble from the remembrance of Allah, from the khashya, the heaviness of the fear of Allah. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with us? And then you look into the Qur'an. And you read into the Qur'an and you begin to understand that the Qur'an is not equally accessible to everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in this Qur'an, dhikr, it is a reminder. Liman? For the one, كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبِ The one who has a heart. أَوْ أَلْقَ السَّمْحِ Or the one who gives an ear. وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ At the same time, witnesses its truth. Three parameters, Ya Abdullah. Do you have a heart? قَلْبَكَ حَاضِرْ مَعَ اللَّهِ It's not about language. Wallahi, you see, my dear brothers and sisters, those who do not understand the Lugha or the Arabi, they weep from the Qur'an more than you and I who understand. Because their heart hears what we don't hear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that the Qur'an is not just understood by the eyes and ears and the tongue. Because there are those who can see but are blind. And those who can hear but are deaf. And those whose hearts are dead although they beat in their bodies. لَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُفْسِرُونَ بِهَا وَأَذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا وَقُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا The Qur'an لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ Look at the example of those who accepted Islam because of a verse from the Qur'an. Look at the example of Umar رضي الله عنه. He comes at a moment to kill the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Umar, when you read his seerah and you hear of his biography, that if he sat on a horse, his feet would touch the ground. Imlaq, a man of strength. And he walks in, and he's on his way to the Prophet to dispatch him. And a man stops him and says, go to your sister first. And he returns to his family. He finds his sister, hears her reading from the Qur'an. Khabbab is reciting the Qur'an to them, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. 
And at that moment, he breaks down the door and his heart is hard. And he punches his sister. And when he sees the blood, his heart softens. His heart breaks his sister. At that moment, the same verses he heard before that had no effect, he says, read it to me again. Faha. Ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa. This Qur'an was not sent to make life difficult. Illa tazkira salli man yaqsha. A reminder to the one who has fear of Allah. Tanzeelan min man khalaq al-arda wa al-samawat al-ula. Revealed in stages from the one who created the heavens up high and the earth down low. Ar-Rahman. The ever merciful. Ala al-arsh istawa. Established upon his throne. His heart now soft. Lahu qalb. It's easy to accept. Alqa samma. Alqa means you take and you throw something. It's like Allah telling you, throw your ear at the Quran. Give your full undivided attention to the Quran. Meaning look into its meaning. Into its different language translations. Something that will touch your heart. Ahibbati fillah. All of us, I can almost swear within myself, all of you have memorized wal'adiyati dabha. Arab, Arabs as well. What does it mean? La adri. If al Arabi, ask beside you an Arabic person. What does wal'adiyati dabha mean? Fal muriyati qabha. Fal mughirati subha. What does it mean? La adri. Why? Throw your ear into it. What does it mean? What am I hearing? What am I listening to? shaheed. All the while, you are listening with your heart and listening with your ears. You testify in its truth, even if you don't understand it. And the moment you submit to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens for you a door to receiving its knowledge and blessing. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people of the Qur'an. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to attach us to the Qur'an and help our families come closer and closer to it. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give assistance to our brothers who lead us in our prayers. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us from the Qur'an the things we don't know and to help us remember the things that we may have forgotten. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put love of the Qur'an into the hearts of our children and our families. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our month of fasting. Allahumma ameen. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka atubu ilayk. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-ghazima li wa lakum.